Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen, uh, Pastor Joanne. The Lord has spoken with me again. Just a few minutes ago, the Lord Jehovah uh, spoke with me uh, just a few minutes ago, about uh, eight minutes, uh, eight to ten minutes ago. Jehovah, the Lord Most High, Jehovah El Lyon, Jehovah the Everlasting God, Jehovah El Olam. And uh, he took me to a place and uh, he began to talk to me about the many, many, many sick people that he's going to heal in mass. There's going to be massive healing of the sick in Nakuru. Just about eight to ten minutes ago, the Lord Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah the Lord my shepherd, Jehovah Rohi, he spoke with me a few minutes ago, about uh, talking nine to eleven minutes ago, and uh, he spoke with me about the massive, massive number of people that he's going to heal. Uh, right now, the compassion of the Lord is directed towards the very sick people, and he is using this revival now to restore people that have gone through tremendous pain and agony and disease, desperation, destitution, people that have gone through hopelessness uh, in hospital systems, uh, the diseases that have not been cured, have not been able to be treated. And this is what the Lord has shown me a few minutes ago, people in their worst conditions, the people he will heal. Now I want to specify this particular case. Uh, I see somebody who um, the Lord brought me to you. You walked with me. You walked with me. You used to have a big stall. You used to have a big shop, actually, a big shop. It looks like a shop with a colleague, with someone, a senior colleague. Uh, and you were selling fish. Uh, you were selling fish. You used to have, again, the Lord now brings me to this particular person, and he walks me to his place to install. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I walked with you, and he makes people speak with me, of course, about their condition. And so he met this particular person. He's a business person. He once had a big shop, a big outfit with a senior colleague. He, I think he was a junior colleague at the time. And uh, you have walked with me to your new stall. He has opened up a new stall, and in that new stall, he has opened up a bigger one is uh, he's roasting fish. I see you roasting fish. You put them, you put them, you line them up yeah, on rows, rows vertical, but rows, and you are roasting them, you are roasting them the way you are roasting them, very beautifully roasting the fish. And uh, I have seen that that big stall you've, uh, you, you've uh, hired up, you've uh, set up, you have also rented out space to some ladies, some ladies there, are also able to sell their own small small tables, small little stalls inside your big stall of tent or something like this. And uh, I have seen the detail of uh, that, that place. There are quite a few people. It looks like a marketplace. This is now a marketplace. But in the marketplace, you've rented out your big stall. And uh, it's a new one you just moved into. You moved out of the big outfit. You moved into your own. And I see that you are roasting a lot of fish. You are very specialized in that. And uh, the fish are vertical, vertical. They're quite vertical. So you are roasting them. And then you turn. Turning, turning the other side, which is not yet roasted. One side roasted. But turning on the other side, this, so you turn like this. And then it flips back to the side that is roasted. And you are trying to turn the side that is not yet roasted. I see the big detail just a few minutes ago. The Lord brought me very far away to where you are. Probably you are at the lake or somewhere. But you turned the other side and uh, and it was difficult. It, it flipped back to the side that is already roasted. And I see you again turning it so that you may now roast the side that is not yet roasted. The fish that you've rolled, you put in rows, in rows, you put in rows, you've rolled them, you've, you've t- attacked them in rows and you are roasting them vertically. And then uh, within the same big stall of that market, you are there, there are some uh, there are some ladies you have given stalls there. They are renting. They seem to be renting from you now. You have allowed them to sell their smaller stalls. 
outside there, I guess to offset your rent that you have started a new outfit. And then at that place, there is a very thin lady that is very, very sick who collapses. She actually collapses, right? There. She's really very thin and very emaciated. So she collapses. I see that she collapses down there. And then there is juice. So people are running to try to see. There is some juice that was brought, which was put in the fridge, but and it was taken right away out of the fridge. But there are other juices there. And I see her now. I, 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 the Lord allows me to take the juice and feed her as she has collapsed. Which is very, very thin. She's very sick. So she collapses. Then the Lord allows me to hold her hands, her fingers, to, 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 to put, put her in the right position. The leg, the, this is the left leg. As she collapsed, the left leg had entered a sack, which looked like a mattress, I guess. Like this, it was straining badly. So I had to pull the leg also out of the mat and, uh, and then straighten them. And the fingers, the, the, the hands also straighten them in the proper position as she's collapsed. And then I start to feed her with some juice at that place. And I see she regains life. She gets back to life. So I see this very sick person, very heavily emaciated. I don't know the HIV AIDS. I don't know what condition it is. And then at the same time, there are some children playing there. They're able to play with one or two kids. Their mother either is at the kiosk there. Their kids, they're playing with this small, uh, this fake motor vehicle that kids do the long wire and the steering wheel and some wheels down there. I see two kids doing that and there is a table. So I see this very sick person uh, that is in a very desperate uh, situation. Uh, most likely this could be HIV AIDS or some debilitating disease that wastes away the body and collapses and uh, the Lord gets me involved. At that place where the fish is being roasted and this owner of this big stall, you are wearing a big hat. You're wearing a big hat, yes, and you're talking about the bishop prick. But you're wearing a, a, a big hat, a big hat that would otherwise be of the other denominations, the other churches like Anglican and Nemit, the way they wear that for their archbishops and Nemit. You're wearing that type of hat as you're doing this. And then at the same time, the Lord Jehovah, he takes me also to a place where there is this mentally ill guy and he's in a building that's not complete. The walls have been built, but the roof is not yet done. I can see the ridged sections of the wall, but the wall has been complete. So you are inside that uh, desolate house, and uh, this, this is a mentally ill person. The Lord shows me mentally ill there. Yeah. And then I see another lady also in a similar condition, but this lady, this one is different. I think she's stripping herself naked. Yes, she only remains there in her clothes, so also mentally ill. And then on top of that, I see another lady that is wearing green. And, uh, and, uh, and the upper, uh, the upper piece is red. It's a green uh, skirt. The upper piece, it's not a long skirt. It's a skirt that reaches beyond the knee down there. But, uh, it's not totally long down. And, uh, your, your upper piece, the blouse is red with long strings at the side red strings of the blouse, and you are dancing, you are dancing, you are dancing, you are dancing. I don't know that you are well. It looks like you are not well upstairs also. So, so the Lord speaks to me about these people uh, that are very desperate for his intervention in this life. Uh, they are mentally ill, some of them. Some are in this very terminal conditions of HIV AIDS, this particular lady. Uh, that, that means that God has now brought to the attention of his servant the suffering of his people in the land. And the Lord is now focusing his servant on this. He is uh, showing him the desperate nature of the conditions of the people to whom he is sending his servant. So he's sending his servant to them and is now highlighting these conditions to him at this hour as in preparation for the big visitation and the healing, the massive healing that will take place when he brings his servant into the grounds of the meeting at the super mega, the super glorious grand healing service in Nakuru. The super glorious Nakuru grand healing service of the Lord. And so this is the situation. The big door of hope has opened. The emissaries of heaven have opened and they are now forecast on the sick 
those who are very destitute, very desperate, and all other conditions. And like I said, the Lord is going to heal in masses. If you thought Kisumu was in masses, because in Kisumu we saw the massive, massive healings of cripples. Until now we have not completed the total numbers of cripples that were healed. We are even in the process now in the office uh, until yesterday night. We were in the office trying to piece together the TV program of the healed with the serious follow-ups. I was seeing yesterday the clips of uh, this uh, precious uh, daughter, Cynthia Wanjiku, who was totally blind, totally, total darkness, to the extent that even the, when we now followed up the family in Uyoma, in Rarieda, yeah, we found that when they placed for her food, in an attempt to reach the food, because of the smell of the food, she would smell and try to go, she would knock things down, including all the other foods, and that food would pour down, totally blind, total darkness. But it's amazing that this past week, when uh, our team visited uh, uh, Cynthia Wanjiku in Uyoma, in Rarieda, she is now able to wash, walk out of the house with water, fetch water from the drum in the house, wash plates and navigate away between chairs. She's seeing very, very excellently well, powerfully well. She's able to see aircraft, an aeroplane that's flying up high up there. She sees the birds and says she can also see the aircraft flying. And she asks, what is that that is flying up there and making noise like that? And then she was told, now that is how an aeroplane looks like. Yeah. So she's discovering many things. She's seeing everything, but she has to touch first or to be told what it is so she can relate the name to what she's seeing. And this is a tremendous time because the same one Jiku told us when her eyes opened, she was able to see people for the first time at the altar of the Lord in the meeting in Kisumu. And she said she could see people. Some had big things on their heads, long and big, others short things on their heads. She, and then she said she was so amazed that the human being, when she saw the human being for the first time, the eyes, she was shocked that the eyes look, they're right in front like this looking at, at her. And uh, she was also shocked that they put things, and she realized on their heads, some small, some small, big things. And then she realized that those who had big things on their heads, those were actually mostly ladies. And those who had small things on the head were actually men. And then later she found out that those things on the head were actually hair. So tremendous, tremendous biblical moment has hit this land. This is the kind of healing that the Lord is going to do in that meeting. Large number of cripples, massive, massive number of crippled babies, crippled young boys and girls, crippled mid-age people, crippled adults, crippled uh, aged people now, senior people. Many, many, many wheelchairs and stretchers will be abandoned there. And then many, many, many blind babies, born blind, that will see their mothers for the first time, their parents, see people. And then blind boys and girls about to 9, 8, 10, you know, 12 years, this kind of age. And then now blind mid-age people, blind mature people and blind senior people, massive numbers. And then we also have the big healing that the Lord has shown me of the many, many, many deaf, of deaf babies, deaf mid-age kids playing, uh, uh, deaf people, mature people in massive, in massive numbers, the mute, the large numbers, the name, the Lord will stretch and pull physically their hands. There will be the visitation of God himself in the field. We will stretch the limbs and create columns and strengthen them and put them to step down. The way he touched Mary Awinja of Shianda in Kakamega in Western Province. And he's going to do so the way he touched also and pulled in uh, Cayenne in French Guiana uh, that we recently came from. So many, many lame legs are going to be stretched and limbs, shriveled limbs. The, 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 the paralytics, many of them will abandon the beds and the stretchers and the wheelchairs, paraplegic people, spinal cord injuries, broken backs, 
the skulls that are broken, tumors in the brain will shred, tumors in the body will dissolve, and the cancers will dry up the blood conditions like leukemia, hepatitis, HIV, AIDS. These are the conditions he's highlighting now. But in mass, I've seen massive healing. The moment he brings his servant, the mighty prophet, to the meeting, that will be the electricity moment. It will be the most shocking moment in the history of the earth. When at that moment now, the cripples will get up, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the mute will speak, the lame will walk, paralytics get up, the wounds will dry up, the tumors shred, the cancers dry from the blood, HIV delete, and it will go on. He will even heal the wounds. He will dry the wounds. I've seen people, some people I think will, the, wound, the tumors burst, they'll burst out. They'll burst out of the body. The power will be so massive that I have seen. And that's why the Lord is now focusing his servant on these very desperate conditions. And what an awesome time to be born again. What an awesome time to be a Christian, to be a believer. Because essentially, he's going to heal all diseases under the sun. We are told about this very massive healing that took place now. We are just receiving more reports about what the Lord did in Kisumu. Yeah, the team, the bus that came from Ukambani, uh, and the, when the man of God arrived in Naivasha on his way to the meeting in Kisumu, and the man of God was blessing people at the gas station in Naivasha, there was this bus from Ukambani, the buses from Ukambani. One of the buses parked just at the place where the exit from the gas station in Naivasha is, because they saw that the man of God was on the other side of the gas station, blessing people, leading people to the Lord, on his way to the meeting. The bus was full of the sick, headed to Kisumu also. And now when the man of God left the gas station immediately and touching on the highway like this, and that bus of the sick also had passed there, and the sick in there waved this. When the man of God lifted his hand and just waved the people of the bus like this, all of them were healed instantly in that bus. This is a big situation that took place in Kisumu. Then how bigger, how much more will Nakuru be? The super glorious, grand, mega healing service in Nakuru. How much more? Because, for example, in that bus there was this man who had a huge tumor on the head that was leaking. It was ble- flowing some stuff from, from and one side of that head was big, swollen, and wet and actually dark. So he was he was flowing from the nose. Some stuff was flowing from the eyes and the nose. Very stinky stuff. I think like the brain or some parts or whatever. That is one of the people that was healed ever since then. That tumor dried up. He is a builder, a construction worker. He is back to work. Where hospitals, including Kenyatta National Hospital, had failed. So now you can see for yourself, you can envisage for yourself, then how much greater? When the man of God just waved at that bus on the road, everybody in that bus was healed. The tremendous testimony we are still receiving right now as we speak of what the Lord in Kisumu. But how greater then will this thousandfold that will take place, the super mega grand healing service that comes up to Nakuru beginning next week. And that's why the Lord is showing me the many, many desperate conditions in the land. I am so blessed that this land has hosted the mighty prophet of the Lord. And in so hosting the mighty servant of the Lord, the land is now reaping the benefit of righteousness that has been decreed in this land over time, of the holiness, the revival of repentance that has come into this land. And that's why many, many sick who had no hope, whose condition could not be addressed by hospitals, whichever private or public, Now they have caught the attention of the Lord in the land. These are the days of his servant. These are the days of his glory. This is the hour of restoration in the church. The days of visitation. The latter glory, the latter reign, the latter anointing, the latter authority of the blood of Jesus. The authority that prepares the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. And all this is evangelizing globally, evangelizing and trumpeting, the power and the authority of righteousness return to the church, return to the pulpit, return to the hearts of the believers. The rejection of sexual sin, the rejection of the gospel of prosperity, the gospel of money, the gospel that champions the things of the world, 
this is proper testament now that surely, yes, the highway of holiness is the way that leads the glorious kingdom of God. So I bless you, Kenya. I bless you abundantly. I bless the nations that are coming. I bless you, Kenya. I bless you again. I bless the meeting that is coming up to Nakuru. I have decreed that blessing. I've released the mighty blessings of the Lord to the sick that are coming to that meeting. That the Lord will remember, remember them, each and every one of them, in his own way, in a mighty way, and do miracles of creation in that meeting, and establish his authority in the lives of his people. This is the blessedness of this hour, the glory of this hour. The blessed one of Israel has now decreed that he will remember his people, he will heal his people, and he will establish the way for the glorious coming of Messiah. I do not know what to expect in Nakuru. I do not know what the Lord can do in Nakuru, some of which we may not know at this point in time. But it looks like this is now the big one in the mighty name of Jesus. Shalom. Thank you.